Hello and welcome again to part part two of this summary as a man thinker by James Allen. If you've not yet listened to part one, I ask you to go back to first listen to that part and then come back to part two. Because uh, if you start at part two, if you've not listened to part one, probably you might get lost. But it is upon you. It is upon you. You have the liberty to just go ahead and listen to part two first, then go back to listen to part one. But without wasting much time, I want us to start from where we stopped in part one. In part one, we stopped at where I gave you some several key takeaways that you can take from this book. So as I had mentioned earlier, this part two, we begin by knowing some interesting facts about James Allen. I want to give you the biography of James Allen. Remember, we are bringing this from vidanmeds.com. It is a company whose purpose is to ensure that we help you discover your purpose and your meaning in life and live a meaningful, impactful life and for you not to be a generational thief for the generations that will come. You have a gift inside of you and that gift is not yours. It is for humanity. If you die with that dream buried inside of you, you will become a generational thief and the generations that will follow will never forgive you because you went to the grave with something that they really needed to make the world better for them. So do not be a generational thief. Do not add to more wealth that is in the grave, in the cemetery. It is upon you to unleash it, to uncover it, and to live it fully. At Vidan Meds, we give you resources to help you navigate the, the complexities of that and to help you realize your purpose, your potential, and live it fully as God desires. Now, James Allen was born in November 28, 1864, and he was a British philosophical writer known for his inspirational books and poetry, particularly his seminal work. As a man thinketh, which is this seminal work that we are, we are summarizing, he was born in Leicester, England. Alien's life was marked by both hardship and personal growth. Allen's childhood was marked by financial hardship. His father died when he was young, leaving him to be raised by his mother and grandmother. Despite their limited means, Allen's mother instilled in him a love of reading and learning. Allen left school at the age of 15 to help support his family. He worked as a knitter in a hosiery factory and later as a private secretary. During this time, he continued to read and begin writing poetry and essays. Allen's writing career began in earnest in the early 1890s. He published several volumes of poetry and essays, including From Passion to Peace in 1898 and The Divine Law in 1901. However, it was his 1902 book, As a Man Thinketh, that truly captured him to fame. Now, what is more about this book? So, As a Man Thinketh is a short but profound work that explores the power of thought and its impact on our lives. Allen argues that our thoughts are the seeds of our reality and that by controlling our thoughts, we can control our destiny the book has been translated into over 50 languages and continues to inspire and motivate readers worldwide. Allen continued to write and publish until his untimely death from tuberculosis in 1912. Despite his short life, he left behind a remarkable body of work that has touched the lives of millions. So from this biography, what are some of the interesting facts about James Allen that you can pick. Number one, Allen was a self-taught philosopher and writer. He never attended university or received formal training in philosophy. Number two, Allen was a vegetarian and a strong advocate for animal welfare. 
Number three, Allen was a deeply spiritual person, but he was not affiliated with any particular religion. And lastly, Allen's work has been praised by many prominent figures, including Mahatma Gandhi, Del Carnegie, and Deepak Chopra. His legacy, his legacy still remains, so James Allen's legacy is one of the inspiration and self-improvement. His work continues to be read and studied by people all over the world, and his message of the power of thought remains as relevant today as it was over a hundred years ago. So that is about the bio biography of James Allen and some of the interesting facts about him. Let's now go to the comparison of as a man thinketh to other books on the same subject. So this book is similar to other self-help books that focus on personal and positive thinking, such as The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent and The Secret by Rhoda Byne. So, However, Allen's book is unique in its emphasis on the importance of character and the law of cause and effect. Allen teaches that our thoughts create our character and our character shapes our circumstances. He also teaches that the law of cause and effect states that every thought, word and action has a corresponding reaction. This means that we cannot simply think positive thoughts and expect our lives to change for the better. We must also choose our thoughts wisely and take action to create the life we want to live. So if you compare uh, that with the, the other books, in contrast, some other self-help books focus on the power of positive thinking alone. They teach that we they, they teach that we can create our own reality by simply thinking positive thoughts. However, this approach can be unrealistic and disappointing as it does not take into account the importance of character and the law of cause and effect. Another key difference between uh, As a Man Thinketh and other self-help books is Allen's emphasis on spirituality. Allen was a deeply religious man and his writing is infused in spiritual insights. He teaches that we all are connected to a higher power and that we can tap into this power to improve our lives, to improve our lives. So that is about the comparison. We have uh, given to you two books that can be compared to, to, to James Allen's book, As a Man Thinking. Let's now go to the target audience and intended readership. Remember in part one, I began with this, the kinds of people who this book will appeal to, but I can still go uh, over the target audience once again, very, very quick. So it has been written for general audience. It is intended for anyone who wants to improve their lives by changing their thoughts. And uh, this book is written for all who desire to achieve true happiness and success in life. It is a message of hope and encouragement, and it teaches you, the reader, how to use the power of thought to create the life you want to live. Allen's book is particularly relevant to people who are struggling with difficult circumstances or who are feeling unfulfilled in their lives. It is also a valuable resource for people who are looking to achieve their goals and dreams. So there are some specific examples of people who can benefit from this book, such as number one, people who are struggling with depression, anxiety, or other mental health challenges. Number two, people who are facing financial difficulties or other hardships. Number three, people who are feeling unfulfilled in their careers or relationships. Number four, people who are looking to achieve their goals and dreams. And last number five, people who are interested in personal development and self-improvement. Overall, this book is for anyone who wants to learn how to use the power of thought to create the life they want, whether in relationships, in finances, in careers, everything, in your parenting, this book gives you the philosophical insights on how your thoughts can help you create that life. Now, how has this book been received? I want to give the reception and critical response to this book. So this book has been widely received both by critics and readers. It has been considered one of the most influential self-help books ever written. 
Critics have praised the book for its clear and concise writing, its powerful message, and its emphasis on the importance of character. They have also noted that the book is timeless and that its message is as relevant as it was once it was first published more than a hundred years ago. So readers have also praised the book for its positive impact on their lives. They have reported that the book has helped them to change their thoughts, improve their character, and achieve their goals. Overall, As a Man Thinketh is a highly regarded self-help book that can help anyone to change their lives. Here are some of the specific examples of positive reception of the book. I am I'm quoting Norman Vincent, the author of Power of Positive Thinking, what he said about this book, and I quote, As a Man Thinketh is a powerful and thought-provoking book that can help anyone to achieve their life for the better, end of the quote. I also want to quote Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich, what he said about this book, and I quote, As a Man Thinketh is a must read for anyone who wants to succeed in life, end of quote. I also want to quote what Stephen Covey, the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, said, and I quote, As a Man Thinketh is a timeless classic that contains some of the most profound wisdom ever written about the power of thought. So that is about the reception and critical response to the book. Let me now go give you the some of my personal thoughts and opinions about the book after reading it. So After reading this book, I found, honestly, I found the book to be thought-provoking and inspiring. That is one of the things that I always see from a book that I've written, that, that, is, that I've read. So Alan's writing is clear and concise, and his message is powerful. I especially appreciated his emphasis on the importance of character and the law of cause and effect. I believe that As a Man Thinketh is a valuable book for anyone who wants to improve their life. It is a book that I will come back to again and again. One of the things I appreciate most about the book is that it is not simply a collection of positive affirmations. Alan does not tell us to simply think happy thoughts and everything will be okay. Instead, he teaches us that our thoughts have consequences and that we must choose our thoughts wisely. Allen also emphasizes on, the, emphasizes on the importance of character. He writes that as a man, that is, a man is a sum of his thoughts, and as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. This means our thoughts shape our character, and our character shapes our destiny. Therefore, from my honest recommendation or insights or opinions, if you are looking for a book that will help you change your life for a better, I highly recommend As a Man Thinketh. It is a book that has the power to transform your thoughts, your character, and your life forever. Both in your relationships, your, your, your general life, your personal life, your parenting life, your career life, this book has the power to transform your life. So that is about my personal thoughts. How about yours? After reading this book, I would like you to tell us your thoughts about the book in the comments section you can also share the book so that uh, you can have a discussion with your friend and uh, you can as well have some one or two recommendations or thoughts about the book that you can also you can also like us to include let me give you some 10 recommendations of other books that uh, if you read this book and you're interested in personal development and self-improvement that you can read because uh, there you cannot just read one book and stop at that place So one of the books, and I leave all these links to these books below this des description. You can have first the summaries before you also de decide if you'll buy them. So the, the links that I leave down, they are summaries of the books that, uh, that, uh, that uh, I'll give you. So number one is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. So this self-help book dives into the principles of success and personal achievement emphasizing on the power of positive thinking and goal setting number two is the power of intention so this inspirational book explores the concept of intention and its ability to manifest our desires and reality the author of this book who is uh, wayne guides us through practical exercises to cultivate positive intentions 
and achieve our goals. Another book is The Secret by Rhoda. This popular book introduces the law of attraction, suggesting that our thoughts and beliefs attract corresponding experiences into our lives. Rhoda provides guidance on applying the law of attraction to create a fulfilling life. Another book is number four, You Are Not a, a Bad Ass. You Are Not a Bad Ass by Jen. This empowering book encourages us to cultivate self-belief and overcome limiting beliefs, emphasizing on the importance of taking action and pursuing our dreams. Number five is The Miracle Mindfulness. The Miracle Mindfulness by Ditch. So Ditch argues or tells us that uh, we should be thoughtful of our mind. That is mindful exercises to enhance self-awareness and, and reduce stress. Another book, number six, is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel. This wise and concise book presents four simple agreements that can transform our relationships and personal lives. Miguel encourages us to live in integrity, avoid taking things personally, speak with truth, and always do our best. Book number seven is The Power of Now by Toll, Eckhart Toll. This proverb book explores the concept of enlightenment and the importance of living in the present moment. Toll guides readers through practices to transcend the ego and connect with our true self. Number eight is Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frankl. This moving meme, uh, that is memoir, recounts Frankl's experiences in Nazi concentration camps and his discovery of meaning in life through suffering. Frank's insights offer hope and resilience in the face of adversity. Number nine is Atomic Habits by James Clear. This practical guide by habit formation provides actionable strategies for building positive thoughts and breaking negative ones. Clear, that is Clear's insights help readers create lasting change in their lives. Lastly, we have Daring Greatly by Brené Brown. This book explores vulnerability and its role in fostering authentic connection and personal growth. Brown encourages readers to embrace vulnerability and live wholeheartedly. So those are 10 recommendations of other books that you can check after reading as a man thinketh. I leave all of those th links down in the description. So what are some of the ways that we can apply the lessons we learned from this book as a man thinketh? Number one, how can we cultivate positive self-talk? How do we do that? Number one, we can replace negative self-talk with positive affirmations. Whether you catch yourself dwelling on negative thoughts, consciously shift your focus towards positive statements that emphasize your strengths and capabilities. Number two is to set clear goals and intentions. That is another way we can apply the knowledge you learn from this book. Set clear goals and intentions. How do you do this? Define your goals clearly and align your thoughts with them. Visualize yourself achieving your goals and focus on the positive emotions associated with success. Right? Number three is to practice gratitude. How do you do this? Regularly reflect on the things you are grateful for, both big and small, because gradually, that is gratitude, shifts your mindset towards appreciation and abundance, attracting more positive experiences into your life. Number four, embrace challenges as opportunities. How? View challenges as opportunities for growth and self-improvement. Approach them with a positive attitude and willingness to learn from the experiences. Number five, surround yourself with positive influences. How? Seek out the company of supportive and encouraging individuals who share your positive outlook, minimize exposure to negative influences, that drain your energy and hinder your progress. Number six, practice forgiveness. How do you do this? Let, you, let go of resentment and forgive those who have wronged you. Holding on to negativity only harms you, while forgiveness liberates you from emotional baggage. Number seven, 
focus on pr the present moment. Avoid dwelling on the past regrets or worrying about future uncertainties. Bring your attention to the present moment and appreciate the beauty and opportunities that surround you. Number eight, engage in meaningful activities. How? Pursue activities that align with your values and passions. Engaging in meaningful work, hobbies and relationships brings a sense of fulfillment and purpose into your life. Number nine, take responsibility for your thoughts and actions. How? Own your thoughts and actions rather than blaming external factors or circumstances. Take charge of your choices and recognize the power you have to shape your destiny. Then lastly, another way we can apply the knowledge we've learned is to continuously practice self-improvement. How? You should never stop learning or growing. Seek out new knowledge, explore different perspectives, and challenge your limiting beliefs. Embrace the journey of continuous self-improvement. And at Vidan Meds, that is our work to help you continue improving yourself. Now, as I wind up, as I wind up this uh, part two, let me give you 10 tips to keep your reading momentum of this book up to the, to the end. If you want to read the book cover to cover without procrastinating, without losing the synergy along the way, let me give you some 10 practical tips that can help you. Number one, set realistic reading goals. Do not overwhelm yourself by trying to read the entire book in one sitting. Instead, set achievable goals such as reading a chapter or a few pages per day. Number two, schedule dedicated reading time. Carve out specific times in your day or week dedicated to reading this book. Treat these sessions as appointments with yourself and avoid distractions. Number three, find a comfortable and quiet reading environment. Choose a place where you feel relaxed and focused, free from interruptions and external noise. Number four, read actively and engage with the text. Do not just passively read the words on the page like a novel. Take notes, underline key passages, and ask yourself questions as you read. Number five, relate the book's concepts to your own life. How? Reflect on how the, the book's teachings connect to your personal experiences and challenges. This will make the reading more meaningful and engaging. Number six, take breaks when needed. If you feel your attention is, is going away, take a short break and refresh your mind. Go for a walk, stretch, or engage in brief activity that clears your mind. Number seven, you can join a book club or a discussion group. And one of the best ones that I always encourage or advocate for is a, a, a discussion, our book club, which is called book bite reads book then bite is b-y-t-e just one word book bite reads dot com just get in there and we'll get the help so discussion of the book with others can enhance your understanding and motivation sharing insights and perspectives with others can spark new ideas and deepen your engagement with the material number eight reward yourself for completing your reading milestones Acknowledge your progress and reward yourself for reaching the set milestones. This will help you maintain your enthusiasm and momentum. Then number nine, do not be afraid to reread passages or chapters. If you find a particular section challenging or insightful, do not hesitate to revisit it. Rereading can help solidify understanding and deepen your appreciation of the book's wisdom. Then last number ten, Maintain a positive mindset and approach. Remember that reading should be an enjoyable and enriching experience. Approach the book with an open mind and willingness to learn and grow. So those are some of the 10, 10 specific uh, tips that you can start implementing while you are reading this book to keep your energy uh, going on so that to ensure that you read from cover to cover. In most cases, when we begin reading books, we might uh, uh, get uh, lost along the way, we might lose the energy and the momentum to read the book, and we might not even finish the book, or it takes longer than maybe you expected. So these tips, I know, can help you read the book 
as a man thinketh from cover to cover within a very short time and get everything that you need now as i wind up i said that uh, this was part two of part uh, that is part two of this summary there is part one it's also there's also a link to part one down in the description in the description also you will also get an affiliate link on where you can buy this book it is an affiliate link that will take you directly to amazon you can buy the book through that link you will not pay more by doing so we'll get a small commission of course which will help us keep the lights on and keep us on bringing more quality and concise and helpful content to you and any other person in conclusion i want to ask you and uh, i also hope that you enjoyed this summary i hope you really enjoyed the summary and i want to ask you now kindly i want to hear from you which part of this summary has re resonated with you whether in part one or part two which part of this summary has resonated with you the most what are your thoughts on the book if you've probably maybe read it of the recommendations that i've given you the 10 book recommendations which one will you pick next either way whichever you want to if you, if you might even want to critic the book either positively or negatively either way let us know by leaving a quick comment below if you are listening to this as a podcast please rate us and review us we'll be very grateful for that if you are watching it or listening it on youtube please subscribe we ask you please subscribe like and even leave a comment doing so you'll be doing us such a great 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 honor we love you and we'll always be bringing more of these summaries to you for your benefit remember we've we've been bringing this uh, from vidanmeds.com it's a company whose purpose is to help you help you really improve on yourself how do we do this by bringing these summaries more resources for self-improvement so that you can be a better person in serving your gift to the world so until next time i want to say thank you for your time i know you could have spent this time in another place but may god bless you until next time bye bye for now